you might want to grab some scissors too and um, some pliers. You'll need the pliers for the end part doing the jump rings. I actually put a little bit of like felt down so that I don't lose beads everywhere. I did put extra beads in everyone's kits. So you will have some left over because when I was first working on this, I just kept losing beads everywhere. The pierced ear ones came with like a set like this. And then the non-pierced ones have these clear things. And you can glue a rhinestone or something in there. So yes, the first step is going to be to open up that beading needle. So once you get your needle ready, you can thread it onto one of the strings. Nope, you won't be doubling it, but you'll have a little bit of a tail just so it's manageable. And then you'll also no notice that there's a bead of a different color in there. And that's so that we can use that as a stopper. I'm actually going to do my hearts out of blue just because they seem to show up the best on the camera. And I'm going to grab a gold bead here to start with and just thread it on. And then once it gets start, started down to the bottom, you'll leave yourself some tail here. You'll go back through it again with your needle. Yep. From the bottom. So that will make like a loop that will hold it in place. Like that. So I left a little bit of tail on here, actually quite a bit, because you'll use that, you'll tie that in later. See, there's like a loop there. At the very end, that'll come off, or it might even come off on its own later once you've got some beads on there secured. And then we're actually going to start on not the very bottom of it. We're going to start on this row because we'll have to go back and do this one because of the way that you have to increase. You add to the sides of it and you really can't go through the, the two um, on there. So we'll just start putting three on. And see, I'm already dropping them. That'll happen occasionally. So that stopper keeps it from going all the way off there. And now you'll put a fourth one on. So what we're going to be doing is called the square stitch. And we're going to go to the bead that's here. So the second one from your needle. And I'm going to turn this a little so it's easier for me to get to it. And I'm going to go in to the bead from the side that's closest to the stopper. So you're threading back through again. Yeah, so we're going, if you're holding it this way, this is my right side, and then that's the left side. Yeah. Yep, just through that one to start with, and then you're going to pull it. So it kind of makes this loop like that. It'll be all loose. And if you pull on it, it should um, tighten it up too. And then once you get that, you go through that fourth bead that you had added and pull through there. 
So you're just finishing that, attaching that bead. And it'll kind of shift a little on you. Once you start adding more, it'll be more solid. So showing it a little bigger, I'm just gonna add one bead. And then we're gonna do our square stitch. So the square stitch is done by going through your bead this way and then pulling it tight and you can pull it just kind of push on there to tighten it up and then you go through that bead that you just added and pull through. So there's our first one. It'll kind of loosen up, but as you work, it'll tighten up. And then add another bead, go through your next one. So you're always working with the bead directly below it. Pull through, and then go through this top one here. So like that. So then I'm going to get another bead and put that on my needle. So you're going to do the exact same thing we did before and you just go to the next bead in the lineup. So you go in from this side of it like that and then pull all the way through. Yeah, I added one. And then you go through this side of it and pull that tight. So I need to get another one, put it on my needle, pull it through. And like before, going from that side Pulling it through. Tighten. Going back through that way. So we'll have three beads with three beads on top of it with the square stitch. So actually at this point, we're gonna go down and put that little one in place. And you can do that by just kind of threading along any of the paths that there already is thread. So I can actually go from this side and just through the one bead. And when you've got multiple strings going through, it might get a little tougher. You just kind of rock it a little bit and that'll help it through. Um, so I just went down this one because we're gonna put the bead right here below this part right here. Right there. And then I'm going to pick up a bead, thread it down, and then I'm going to basically make a loop going through, bead right above it, and then through the bead we just added. And then I'm gonna need to go back through one of the beads somewhere. You don't have to do the same one I did, but I'm going through, actually I probably shouldn't do that one. 
I should probably go up through the middle one again so that I can then get to an end where we'll continue working from. I went through the middle. And then you can go up rows. So anywhere there's a thread that there's like a line, you can use that as a pathway. So I'm gonna go up and out where we started from on this. If you wanted to do the bottom part, what I did was just go through those two, pull through, might be a little tricky, might have to pull a little, and then I just put one on to do that bottom part of the heart, pull through, so I just went like that. I'm going to secure it in place. And my needle's actually a little too thick, so I'm just going to thread it through that way. There we go. So we're going to take and make this top row of three into this row of five. But I'm going to add two more beads to my needle to increase. So each side has its own way of increasing. So we have the two on here. Now, like before, we're going to go into this first needle that, or first needle, first bead that we added of the two, you're going to go into it from this side right here. So like that. And then you pull through, it's making a loop once again. And this one, you're going to actually have to make sure to pull it so it gets up to the edge. And if, if it doesn't make it to the edge, like this one didn't, you're going to have to guide it so that it does, which might mean some loosening. So I loosened this side so that I could get that bead up against that one. And I'm actually using my fingernail to hold it in place and then pull it tight. So it looks like that. And then you go through it just like the other square stitches. And see, it's still got loose from the rest of it. So you can tighten it again. I'm going to undo it because it got away. So it really works best if you hold it the whole time. And it doesn't have to be your fingernail, it could just be your thumb. I was trying to hold it so you could see it, but I really can't um, hold it and make it be visible at the same time. And then once that's tight, you can go through that one. This row now has four in it. And this one right here is actually going to be, instead of being part of this row, it's actually part of this row up here. So you kind of have to work ahead to get 
the increases. To increase, I'll just add two more beads. And you want to keep this tight to the rest of the project. You're going to go into it from this side. So this is the first bead we added. Pull through, keep it tight, and then you go through that second bead you added. And there it is. And then from there, you just add your beads and keep doing the square stitch around. So then we're just going to do square stitches after this. Just like before, you put on, put the bead on all the way down. And the bead directly below it is the one that you stitch into. And you pull through. And sometimes you gotta wiggle it. This one does not want to go through. If you got one that doesn't want to go through, you can kind of adjust it, see if it, if you can try it again from a different angle, maybe. Okay, I'm going to try again to go into this one. There we go. And there it went. It just took a little bit of finagling, but it went. And then finishing out that square stitch, you just go through that top one. And then for the rest of the ones in this row, I'm just going to do square stitches for these last two, and then we'll do a decrease. So I'll show that one when we get to that. So you're ready for the increase on the other side, which we're going to be putting our fifth one onto the row below. There's my two beads. I've added them on. And now, try not to flip it too much. I'm going back through them from this side. It's hard to. So I went through this one and then I'm going through this one. And it should make a loop of these two beads. Once again, you want to make sure it gets tied up against the edge. I'm going to undo that. Just for a second here. So I went through the one and I'm going through the second one. And once you've went through the second one, you can actually go through that one there. So you're kind of going through two on one row. And 
tighten it. And then you go to the one directly above it and pull through. And that should tighten it to it. By adding two beads, and then you're going to go right through this first one you added. You want to make sure it stays close to the project, nice and tight, and then pull through. And my needle probably won't fit through this, but what I would do is go through this one and I go through that one. And we'll see if I can actually pull this through. No. So I'm going to go through this one, and I'm going to go through this one. And then from there, we're going to go through this one and this one. So your top two from this current row. So go through like that. So then we do an in increase on this side, the square stitches, and then an increase on the other side again. And this is for the increases for row seven. And then the square stitches are gonna be for this row here. If your stopper has fallen off already at this point, it's okay, you can take it off or you can just leave it on there. It doesn't really matter because at this point, all of these ones are stitched and locked in place. So they'll be okay. So we're gonna do the increase from the right side now. Put two beads on. Go through the first one from this side, but make sure that it's tight to the project. Pull that and go through the second one up top from this side. And there's our increase. And then square stitch across, and then we'll do another increase. So we're ready for the left side increase again. We're gonna put on two beads, move them up close to the project. We're gonna go through that first bead that we put on. And this side. Make sure it's tied up to the project. And then from this side, we pick up that second bead, pick up the previous row. So we're going through two 
and pull through. Oh, I'm off screen. And then we go through the top two once again. So we've finished our row seven. We got the row nine square stitches done. So we're actually going to do these square stitches and do an increase on this side and actually not do this side until we do this side first. So I'm going to add two once again to my needle, do an increase. Go through the first one from the left side. Make sure it's tight to the project. Pull that loop tight and then go from the right side through that second bead. And then square stitch. And because we're on the lobes of the heart, we're going to do only four square stitches. And actually, it's going to be only three st square stitches because the first one is from that increase section. Okay, so I'm going to flip it one time or one more time and we're going to be doing the last two on this side. And that's going to be done by doing a decrease. I'm going to go down from this is my starting point. I'm going to find my two down here. So it's a little shiny. It's hard to kind of see. But I've got my two beads here, and I'm just threading through them. And this one might be a little more difficult to get your thread through. You might have to give it a good tug. And then once you get through those two, we're going to go to the one directly above it and thread through from this side. And we're just doing one bead. So just that one bead right there. Pull through. So now we're ready to put a bead on, pull up close to your project, and then you just do the square stitch with it. The decreases are done by actually going back into the previous row. So we just finished this row and we're gonna go back to this row. Go two in like so. And because my needle is way too big to fit through that, I'm just gonna thread it through by hand. One and two. And then after you get through these two, we're gonna go back through this one, this direction, so like that. And 
And once we get through all that threading through, we're ready to add our bead and do the square stitch just like we did before. And then you do the second one since there's two on this part. So once we get our two square stitched on, I'm going to actually work my way back so that I can work from this side where we're going to do our final increase so that that row of now eight becomes the row of nine. And then do the other half of the hearts top. And I can just work there by going through. I can go down following these portions here. So I'm just going to go through two. You can kind of do your own pattern, whatever gets you there. And some of them might be hard to go through because I've already got multiple threads. So you might have to back up and try again. And if you're really struggling with it, it might be easier to do one bead at a time when traveling. So I'm going to go to this one and only do one. And that seems to be working better for me. Maybe I'll go down one here. And I want to get to the end of the row. So I'm just going to go one bead at a time because it wasn't working too well for me doing multiples. It was just too much in one bead. So I might tempt it and see if I can do all four of these. Let's see. There we go. So we have this half done and now I'm going to flip it one more time and we're going to be starting from here. We need to increase this so that we got our row of nine. So we're increasing from the right. I'm going to put two beads on. And do our increase just like before. Going through that first bead, pulling it tight to the project, and then going through the second bead. There we go. And then since we're on this other side, but it's kind of flipped, I'm just going to work with this side. So we already have this side done. Now we're going to look at this side. Um, we just did this bead right here. So we just have three more square stitches to do. So now that we have our four, I'm going to flip it and we're working from this side. We're going to do a decrease again. So remember your decrease, you're actually going to go back down to the previous row, go through the two beads directly below. And if you're struggling to get through them, it might help to just do one bead at a time. 
I'm doing just my first bead here. And there's my second bead. Oh, okay. Trying to get a knot here, so we'll undo that, fix that knot. Then we're going right above where we've come out of this second bead, back in our row that we were just working in and go this direction through the bead, pull through, and now we're ready to add our bead. And then we're gonna have two of these, and they're just the square stitches like before. I've got all my beads made into the heart. I can finish it off by stitching back down in just to kind of strengthen it a little. And I'm just stitching the bead directly below. And then I'm gonna make a knot in here, anywhere I can catch some thread. So that I can hide my knot. Pull through and make a knot. And then I'm just gonna thread out through the beads so that I can hide that knot kind of in my beads there. There we go. Trim it. If you haven't removed your stopper bead by now, you can do that. And if it's a little too tight, you can even use your needle to help loosen it. There we go. And I can hide that little extra thread or you can just trim it at this point, but I like to just make sure everything is secure. So I'm going to just put my needle on this little tail. and just thread it through a few of the beads. It doesn't really matter which ones. Sometimes it's more of which ones will let you fit it through after you've sewn through them so many times. And that one does not want to go. I'm going to back that up. and try a different one, and there we go. And I can trim that one then. Then I would finish my second heart for the project, but I will just show how to add the hardware to it. So if you're doing the Pierce Stewart's ones, we've got these little studs with the backers for them, just like any other earring. Or if you've got the non-pierced ear ones, you've got these. Um, there should be some gems in there. If not, you can always see me and I will give you <laughs> some new gems. And then there's gem tack. You can use any kind of glue. And you would just be able to glue a gem into this little open space right here. Or you can leave it blank and it pretty much blends in with your ears. I have other earrings like this. and it's amazing like how it looks like there's nothing holding it onto your ear. 
So either one you're using, you're gonna use your jump ring and put it through the little hole that you have on the earring binding. And to open your jump ring, you can just put that into your pliers and open it a little bit. That should be enough space. And then I hung mine from the corners. And I think that looked the best when I was trying to do it. Um, and I actually wanted to make sure that they hung different directions on each ear. So I did one from this side and one from the other side. You could do them both from the same side or you can do them opposite sides. What you're gonna do is thread through some of the string on your beads to hold it. And then after you get that, put whichever earring binding you have through that as well, and then close up your jump ring. Good and tight so it doesn't fall off. And there is your earring. So you do that for both of them. And of course, if you have any questions or if you need any help, you can contact me. My information will be in the description. If you want to come into the makerspace to use some of our tools to do it, that is completely fine. And I can help you in person as well. So good luck and happy Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm.